Guys, back with you again today for more education on bee biology. I hope you enjoyed my previous video where I went through the hive and these great pictures of these frames that I have. But I want to highlight one more in particular. We looked at this in the last video. Royal jelly. Look at that. That royal jelly, I want to spend a little bit of time on today because I know some of you may be wondering. You may be new to beekeeping, may be new to honeybees in general, and you may be wondering where do bees get the royal jelly? When do they use it? What is it used for? Okay, right out of the hat, let me say this. Royal jelly is that secretion that bees give a larvae after three days when they want to turn a worker bee, change it in its development stage into a queen bee. That's right, because normally they continue to feed worker bees after day three in the larva stage, you know, things like pollen and bee bread and honey. So if they continue to give her that uh, larva a strict diet of just royal jelly, they can change its DNA, its makeup into a queen bee. If you are a fan of my older videos, then you know all about this. It has been through, it's a model and unfortunately, like most bees, it's a, it's a worker bee, but like most worker bees, they uh, work themselves to death. And this one has too. You can see broken legs or, uh, gosh. And actually, believe it or not, the, the, the gut and the honey crop is missing. Let's see, yeah, that's the uh, honey crop would be right here. And then the, the, you'd have the proventriculus, you have the ventriculus, and then you'd have the bowel. It's all gone. The stinger, it's all gone. This is what it looks like. This worker bee must have stung somebody. <laughs> so when they sting something, like a person, all of their uh, stomach, all, the, all, all of this just comes out. And it did. <laughs> so we've looked everywhere to find it. It is gone. But what I want to show you today is right up here. Look at this. This is where the royal jelly is actually produced in worker bees right here. And so they produce royal jelly between the uh, ages of 6 to about 12 days old. These glands, the hypopharyngeal glands, actually start developing 6 to 12 days old and they get plumped up. Each one of these has the ability to have sort of like grapes that kind of get plumped up. And then they secrete the royal jelly from their mouth parts and feed it to either a new queen or all larvae, all one to three day old larvae, worker bees, drones, everybody gets fed the royal jelly first three days in their larva stage. So I wanted you to see that how this works. This royal jelly is made by worker bees six to 12 days old. This worker bee, in order to become a nursing bee, is what we call them. They're nursing because they're producing the royal jelly, and they can nurse, they can feed it to developing larva. So they are nurse bees. In order for it to become a nursing bee, it needs a very good diet of a lot of good protein, a lot of good carbohydrates, it has to be well fed. If this bee, this worker bee is not well fed, then these glands will actually start to dry up. It's a nursing bee. So they need a lot of intake of good nutrition in order to be able to produce royal jelly. I think it's really important to realize that a lot of times I teach a lot on bee nutrition. And when I teach, I give a talk where I say that I experienced a, a, a moment in my beekeeping enlightenment days, my early discoveries of when I was just figuring beekeeping out, that a lot of my um, larvae that was in, in the late summer or early fall, it didn't have enough royal jelly. And it dawned on me finally after several years of studying it, it's because these worker bees in the fall and in dearth don't have an, enough um, food, enough resources to plump up uh, the royal jelly glands. And so they can't feed the larvae and the larvae just dies in late summer or early fall. And the bees then begin consuming the eggs or the larvae as protein. They just, they, yeah, they eat it. And so I have decided years ago that what I've done and, and I've taught you guys this is that any chance I get 
When my bees are in a dearth, I'm feeding my bees. I want my bees to be fat bees. <laughs> I really do. Uh, fat bees are good bees. Not necessarily fat in the way we think of humans and ourselves as fat. We, you know, we have fat cells. We have fat parts of our bodies, but bees, fat bodies are a little different. Uh, fat bodies is where they store vitiligenin, is where they store a lot of reservoirs uh, in their abdomen and in, in their head glands where they can actually store a lot of food in a time of dearth. Now we call those bees a winter physiology that they can actually store in their bodies that normally is nutrition that they find in the cells. They stored in their bodies bees of winter physiology. Let me talk to you a little bit about bees of winter physiology. Now, before we go crazy about thinking that winter is what triggers bees of winter physiology, let me correct you or let me set the record straight. It's not winter. They're not being um, uh, adaptable to cold weather. That's not what's going on. Bees of winter physiology, probably not the best term that we use, but, you know, it's what we use. But what it means is the, the colony has realized that it will be a while before there are any more nectar resources. So there's a gap or a dearth. So anytime there's a dearth, then the bees are triggered to realize, uh-oh, we are not going to have any flowers, sources such as nectar and honey for a while. So we better do something. Let's start raising bees that can live longer than four to five weeks. We need bees to live all the way until we start having nectar sources and pollen sources again. And those bees' physiologies are such where they can live that long, four to eight months. Now, why am I making a point of this not being bees of winter physiology? Because a lot of times this does happen in climates that are hot. But they're so hot that they go through a dearth where there's no flower sources out there, but it's not a cold season. It's a hot season. But, in, but still, the bees raise bees of winter physiology. It's just a, a point in time when the bees know it's going to be a while before nectar picks up again. Let's raise some bees. So these are bees that are raised in a dearth deficit. So we might call them a dearth deficit physiology. They know they're going to have to make it because, look, they, they, they're going to start raising uh, brood again. They need these bees to be ready. So bees of dearth physiology, they're sitting around waiting and they're ready to go to work as soon as the season breaks and or as soon as nectar starts flowing again, then they're ready. They have stored reservoirs. They can start activating and using and producing royal jelly to feed instantly to feed when the queen starts laying again in the spring or after even in hot areas after a long dry period where things start blooming again. Royal jelly is fascinating. As you can see in the picture here, a lot of people, you know, I've actually collected a lot of it and uh, I think it's uh, amazing. I taste it. You see me taste it in my video on how to start beekeeping and it has a really unique flavor to it. A little bit like yogurt, but it's a little bit like uh, yogurt, but then it's more acidic. It's very, very unique flavor. And of course the queen, that's all she eats her whole life. And she lives to be the longest, uh, oldest uh, bee in the whole hive. And so some people think that it has a lot of medicinal uh, benefits to eating royal jelly. I'm not going to make that claim. Obviously, it is a very unique thing uh, to gather and to try your own uh, hand at. But royal jelly certainly is amazing, produced by the bee's glands and fed to young larvae in, in the colony, royal jelly. Now, other people often wonder about royal jelly in the sense of who eats it and what bees are fed the royal jelly. And remember, that's the early bees in their first one to three days of their larva stage. And only queens that they, they want to raise queens are fed royal jelly past that third day. That's how they raise queens. And this is what happens if a colony loses their queen and they're like, uh oh, we need a queen. Then they will go find a fertilized egg. And as it ages to the larva stage past day three, they'll continue to make a queen by feeding it only royal jelly in her whole development stage as a larvae. So they have that option to do that. And again, only nurse bees 
can produce the royal jellies between the ages of six to 12 days old. All right, guys, if you want to see me eat some royal jelly, I've got a video right here. It's called How to Start Beekeeping in 2023. This would be good for those of you just getting your appetite wet for beekeeping. How to start beekeeping. Let's do it. You'll enjoy it. I'll see you over there.